I loves. And well, there is the big man, Robert William. Right there. <laughs> Bigger than life again, right there. Wow, I'm smoking a smoke for him. I know that's exactly what he would want me to do. Yeah, because after all, I am his only daughter, you know. And, uh, yeah, honoring his flag right there. Just like his dad before him, John Ryder. Yeah, my grandfather. That was back to New Straits Hill, Ohio. Quite the history. Yeah. And uh, Ann Williamson, yeah, Annie, yeah, and all my family back there in the hills of Ohio, where the first Revolutionary War took place when Native Americans gathered and united to fight the incoming Anglo-Saxons. I'm trying to take their land from it's still sacred land today, loves. It is sacred land right there. And, uh, yeah, maybe someday I'll get there in Straitsville. My dad was there for Straitsville, and then somehow it became new. Not sure how that happened, but I'd like to find out what made Straitsville new Straitsville. But I wanted to make this video to document and honor my dad. You know, Lucifer. Because I made a... Or I had a... See, please forgive me, I'm a work in progress. I always will be. I had an epiphany tonight about how the, you know, there's such a difference between Satanism and Luciferianism. And if you have the wisdom, you have the knowledge and the discernment to know the difference. Like the difference between making love and just having sex and lust and enslavement to the body. Because there's a huge difference. Huge. There's no love in it. What's the point? For me, well, for Daddy, it was a different equation. He was a handsome devil, and every woman wanted him. And every woman pretty much had him. Anyone, he'd let him. And all of the kinds of stuff, too, in the Mount Diablo Valley. It's unimaginable, but I don't want to talk about that, because he was quite the handsome devil, and you can't blame the women for wanting him in the worst way. Good God almighty. And I got my charm from him. Look at how tall he is. Amazing. I'm going to move now, because it hurts. Yeah, when hasn't it? And this is my altar for my dad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hanging wallet. And, you know. Yeah, hanging in there. God help me. And that's my daddy. There's his old bit right there. Robert William Ryder. You know, I'll read it for you because I've got a picture of it, but it's kind of nice to read it, I think. Let's see what it says here. Yeah, it says, let's see. Yeah, Robert Ryder. It gives you in the picture. I'm going to read your little bit for you, Dad, while I smoke your cigarette for you. Yeah, there we go. Hold the light for you. There you go, Dad. A good picture of that. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Get a really good shot of it. See you read it. Robert Ryder, Pittsburgh, December 8th, 1935. April 16, 1998. Robert Ryder, self-employed truck driver. Ryder trucking. That's right. Double belly dump. Kenworth. For 35 years, he died Thursday. He was 62. Actually, he was 63. If they crunched the numbers, I think I'm right, but I could be wrong. But anyway, the native of New Straitsville, Ohio, Lived in Pittsburgh for 15 years. He lived there a lot longer than that. He served in the Navy from 1954 to 1958. He survived by his fiance of seven years, Patricia Atkinson, who ended up marrying my brother, David. Good God almighty, help me. <sighs> yeah, it's pretty ugly. I don't, I'm sure he wasn't too happy about it. I'm sure he still is. That's okay. It's been between them. They just made sure I got nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was lucky to get this. And uh, let's see. Dad, that's an honor of you because they screwed you too. Okay, Sold your truck, sold your tools, sold my MG. 
Made sure I got nothing, but accused me of stealing your pocket knife, which I ended up finding behind the dryer. That was pretty chitty. Let's continue, because I don't want to interrupt your obituary. It's rude of me. Sorry, you deserve better than that. All right, dance me done. I'm not going to read her name again. Daughter, Laurel Ledoux of New Mexico. Son's David Ryder of Concord. And Clifford Ryder, yeah, of Walnut Creek. Neither one of them even went to go see him before he died, nor even told him to go to hell or spit on him. I took a Greyhound bus, on the other hand, sick as chips, for a day and a half to get to my deck. I had an accident, car accident. Some guy T-boned me, left me, so I had to take a Greyhound to get to my deck. I didn't have a truck anymore. But I got on that Greyhound to go make sure that my dad saw his daughter three days before he died. I saw him for three days. My brother's 20 minutes away. Neither one of them cruise over the hill to piss on him. Sorry to say. Oh, but David was really good right there to go move in with Pat, make her a writer a year later, sell all the dad's crap, his trucks, everything. Took all that and bought a house in Jackson. And uh, na, 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 yeah, we're going to Jackson. And na, 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 yeah, I did Johnny Cash song. My dad would love it. <sighs> yeah, and yeah, there's Clifford. Good God. He, yeah, he took all my mom's stuff. What a creep. Made sure he pressured into killing herself. Pretty much, I could prove it. He stole everything from me and David. Made sure I got nothing again. We're a great big brother, right? Really looking out for your little tiny doubtless sister. Of Walnut Creek, yeah, he still has my mom's house there. I don't even think he's a writer, really. I'd love to do the DNA on that asshole. Sisters Margaret, Ken, Kenny, and Mary Taylor. They're great. Hey, Mary, both of Ohio. Brother Richard Ryder, he was a half-brother. He wasn't really a writer at all. My grandma Ann screwed around after my grandfather, John Ryder, who died under that flag, too. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, she, he screwed around with a minor. Or she did, actually. I'm sorry. See, please forgive me. I'm work in progress. God help me. Yeah, my grandma Ann, you know, was having an affair with a man. After my grandfather was killed. She was alone. She was a widow. What you want her to do? So, she had Richard and, um... Margaret, with another man, after my dad and my Aunt Mary, to tell the truth. And let's see, read on, let's see what else to say here. And three grandchildren, and that would be Lucas, Travis, Patty, because Jacob was already dead. Services, private arrangements by the Neptune Society of Walnut Creek, well, they never told me. About when they were having their little service or anything. I couldn't get there anyway. I said my goodbyes to my daddy. Totally. I spent every second I could possibly spend with him. Before he left this world peacefully. Knowing his little girl loved him. Went all the way out of her way. No matter how bad he abused me. I went anyway. Because like my mom, I loved my daddy. And I would much rather have his presence in my life than any shit or crap or matter that didn't matter he left behind him. But it mattered to everybody else and they did everything they could to keep it away. And they did keep everything away from me. Pictures, mementos, all my Father's Day gifts I gave him. You know, it was really shitty. Maybe jealousy? I don't know. It's within them. I'll let Dad judge him when they get there. Oh boy, God damn it. Oh, I don't even feel sorry for you. I don't feel sorry for David. I don't feel sorry for Pat. I don't feel so, certainly don't feel sorry for Clifford Paul Ryder. Oh, that's right. He changed to Paul Ryder. Paul Clifford Ryder. You know, Paul that fell off a cliff all the way to Tartaret. Yeah, I hope he pinked his head off all the way down. Ah, pink. Ah, pink. Ah, pink, 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 pink. All the way down, Clifford, because you never helped me at all. You, oh, God. Oh, it's okay. I'm not going to get skippy. this. Focus. Focus. It's about your daddy and his honor. 
Not about the chip bags who do the same chit to me as he did to him. Oh, Dad. Yeah, I'm sure you turn on you turn on it's whatever. It's okay. So you're helping make it up for me now. And I think you were right because I came across another epiphany kind of. And that is that, uh, you know, you said I hit the jackpot when I got Mike. And at first I was really pissed off at you, you know. If I could talk to you, this is what I would say. And I could, you're here already in spirit, so I'm not going to worry about it. You hit the jackpot, Lori, with that one. Mm -mm. With Mike, you hit the jackpot. And at first, like, you know, I mean, after all this stuff came out about serving under this master narcissist for, with the immeasurable PTSD from the military for 25 years and mercilessly abused me six ways from Sunday. And, uh, and I, I was wondering, what, what is, is that a good thing? You said I hit the jackpot. Was that to be treated like absolute chit, nit, chit? You see, sure, hit the jackpot on that. I come to find out. Good God almighty, how many? Uh, he did. He treated me like straight up. Chip. Chip, nip, nip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can be certain of it. And, you know, and I thought, wow, that's a really, you know, kind of a chitty thing to say. You know, you hit the jackpot. Um, what, was somebody treating me like absolute dog crap? Well, yeah, boy, definitely. Huh. I was kind of pissed off about it, upset. I angry. Well, gosh, you know, if I hit the jackpot, boy, you lied to me because this dude <sighs> crucify me six ways from Sunday. I'll tell you what, I need a light. I'm gonna smoke another one here, Dad. That's one for me. You can watch. Mm. I learned to light a, a cigarette without touching it. That's so cool. Hmm. Yeah, go in the rule. Yeah, so. I made that for you, Dad. In honor of you, because they treated you like shit, too. But you, 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 I mean, they thought I had a temper. How many men, I'm sure, my dad squished their skulls. I know, I've heard the story. In Ohio, his hands were so big, he was so huge, and he could just crush your skull with his hands. His uh, pinky was the size of my thumb. His pinky was the size of my thumb. Yeah. That was the size of his pinky. It's huge. And he straight up squish your face with his hands. And they just throw you out in the forest and be nothing left of you. And that happened many times. Because on the reservation in native lands, there's a different kind of justice there. There's a different kind of law where my dad learned to crawl. Mm hmm. Yeah. You don't mess, you know, with, uh, yeah, so anyway. <sighs> He's definitely Native American, and, uh, you look.